So I love the Resident Evil series, and I just recently got around to replaying through the first one on the old PS1, if anyone remembers that. It was a terrific game. And it used fixed third-person cameras to, uh, to track the player as they moved around the mansion, not like the, the orbiting sort of over-the-shoulder camera that more modern third-person shooters have. But it's a pretty simple, simple effect to pull off in Unreal Engine. Just takes a little bit of tweaking, a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of know-how. Uh, but let's uh, let's get started. So I've just copied the the third person character, uh, the the default one from the from the template. And you can see here this is the orbiting camera. So we can we can move around our guy. So let's get rid of that. We'll open up our character and just delete the camera boom and the follow camera. Gone. And that's all the tweaking we have to do to our character. So next we'll need cameras. So just right click in the browser. We'll make ourselves a new blueprint class. We want an actor, and we'll call it. Let's avoid typos this time. Fixed cam one. And we'll open that up. Drop ourselves in a camera. And that is, that's, that's pretty much it. That's all we have to do. Just put a camera in an actor. To get it to follow the player though, is a little bit more involved. So we'll head over to the event graph and we will, uh, well, we'll leave this here. Let's, well, yeah, we'll just use the tick. If we uh, just get these set, relative rotation set actor relative rotation done we need to just subtract the like this actor's location from the player pawn you know to get our to get our angle our angle of approach as it were get player pawn get actor location and we'll duplicate our actor location so we have one for the camera then we'll just subtract these from each other and turned it into a rotator, so rotation from x vector, and plugged it into new relative rotation, and that's the code for getting the camera to point. Now, to get the camera to actually affect, like to, to be the the main camera of the scene, we'll go back to our our editor here and open the level blueprint for our stage. Now, for this one, we will need our our begin play node. Get that there, and then we want set. Well, set view target if you don't see it once you start typing just uncheck this context sensitive button and then you'll see it there under game with player right now we need to find our camera so that means dropping our blueprint into the scene so we'll put that there and i'll move it to somewhere that, that makes sense over in the corner i guess sort of about there and once it's in the scene and it shows up in the world outliner just grab it and drag it onto our level blueprint so far so good We'll also need to get the player controller here so that the so that the, the camera actually affects the player. Drop that into the target and our fixed cam one as the new view target. And that's all there is to setting and resetting different cameras. Once we hit play, we'll see that Yep, just uh just as we just as we thought, the camera's tracking the player. So far so good. Next we'll need to make a couple more of these. So back in the back in the scene, let's just hold an alt and click. And we'll duplicate this a couple times. We'll get three cameras to play with. Oh, what just happened? Yeah, just misclick there. That's okay. So now we have three cameras. And we'll grab our level blueprint again. We'll drop them both into into our blueprint. Fix cam two and fix cam three. Good stuff. So far, so good. We'll need this little guy. So we'll drop this for now and pull it back over here. Now we need to think up a way to get the cameras to switch automatically, sort of based on the, the player's behavior without them having to do anything. And my solution to this was to use distance from the camera. So when the player gets close, the camera will activate and become the one that we're looking at. In order to do this, I set up just a, a variable, a camera switch variable, which is an integer. And we'll compile that. Drop from here, we'll need to set this variable. And we'll grab our camera, similar to how we did before, we're going to get the player pawn and sort of find the distance, the distance between the two, these two actors. And there's a node for that. It's called get distance two. Very handy node. You could be stuck doing maths for hours unless you, if you didn't know that this, uh, this node was here. And up off this, we'll head to a less than so that we know when the pawn is. So they know when the, the player pawn is less than a certain distance, which for me, I found a good figure to work with was 1600. 
and then off this red dot here, this Boolean result will get ourselves a branch and set the value if it is true. So if the camera and the player pawn are less than 1600 from each other, then it will set our, set our variable. And all we have to do is just take this and duplicate it twice more for each of the other cameras. So where are we? There's our fixed cam two. And our third camera over here. And we can't forget that because these, these are gonna be switched on this integer, the integer has to be a different value for each one. So I'll use zero as the first camera, one as the next, and two as the third. All sorted. And in order to, to call this, to, to run this check, we're gonna put it into a custom event. Add custom event, I've just called it check camera. And then we'll string it all up. From the false node to the next branch, so that it sort of steps through. And there's our custom event. So we'll put that out of the way as we work sort of over here further. We'll get our event tick. And we'll make ourselves another variable because we need to set the active camera, which is what I called this variable, based on the result of that integer. And we've got to make sure to set this to an actor type. We'll compile that and drag in our set. So we're going to set the active camera based on the result of this check here, which we do with a, oh, so first of all, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get the check camera first. So the, the, with, the, with each tick, with the event tick, we'll check which camera we're using. And then coming out of that, we're going to switch on it. And the integer is going to be our camera switcher. So we'll just get it, plug it in. And we'll add a couple pins here. Three, one for each camera. So we'll move our set, fix camera one. We'll have to duplicate this two more times. Plug them all in, because we're gonna set our active camera to the fixed cams that we have in the scene. And then just connect them up to our switch. Zero, one, and two. Then we'll get this piece of code from the begin play. And plug in the result of all of the sets into our view target. Then we'll need to get our active camera and set it as a new view target. So what's going on here, if, uh, if you're looking for a little more explanation, is that we're checking for an integer for which camera to be using based on the distance from each of our fixed cams. And then once we have that integer coming out of this check camera, we're going to switch this value, this active camera, based on what that integer is. 0 for camera 1, 1 for camera 2, and, and 2 for camera 3. Which, coming out of that, now that we've set the active camera, we define the active camera, the, the view target, the active camera as the view target, coming out of these set nodes. And the result should look a bit like this, if we've done it all right. We'll hit play. And once we move in range of our other cameras, yeah, so the view target's being, being switched just fine. We'll move over, yep, the other one's working. The controls, the, the controls are very, very weird. So the next thing we have to do is set the, the, uh, the rotation of the player. We have to orient the player with the camera so that it's intuitive, so that it makes sense when the, when the player is, is playing. So they're not getting, you know, getting confused and bogged down by the, the weird rotations that are going on. And that's easy enough to do. It's, uh, it actually links back to our third person character here. You can see this node, the get control rotation. The control rotation, as you can see in the, in the tip, is the view rotation of the pawn. It's just the, it orients the forward direction so that it, it makes sense when we're, when we're using the arrow keys to move it around. So we'll just grab these two nodes, this break and make rotator. Just copy and drop them in here. Because we don't need all three angles of rotation, just the one, like the, the 2D plane on the floor. That's the only one we need. And we'll get our, we'll duplicate our active camera. Where are we? There we are. And get the rotation. So we'll set the rotation of the get rotation, get actor rotation. We're going to set the rotation of the camera to the control rotation of the pawn. By plugging this here, we'll break that rotator. Move these down out of the way. And then out of here, set control rotation. And plug that into rotation. And we need to get the player controller again and plug it into target. 
And now that's done. So yeah, now down is the direction towards the camera, up is the direction away from it. And this makes a lot more sense when you're, when you're oriented with the camera. Moving about and then we'll go check out another one. Oh yeah, so this, this flicker here is because the change is being happened sort of instantaneously. The direction is being changed straight away, so we're sort of hovering around the lines between two cameras. So we'll come off here and just use a delay after we've set the camera. A delay of about 1.5 seconds should do it. We compile, then play. So now when the cameras change, yeah, there's a little bit of a gap, a little bit of time between the, between the changing of the cameras before the rotation changes, which gives the player just a little bit of time to adjust, a little bit of time to reorient themselves with the new direction. And that's working, that's working just fine. And the last thing we'll do is add a bit of a, a silky smooth camera lag to our camera so it feels a bit more natural. Because I mean, while this does work, there's this perfect tracking of the player, I don't like it as much. If we add like a, a bit of swing to the camera, it'll feel a lot more smooth, a lot more natural. It'll just feel a little bit better to play, at least in my opinion. And it's uh, easy enough to do. We'll head over to our camera again. We'll need these three nodes, just duplicate those. We need to get the actor rotation and also our event tick. We'll disconnect that from there and bring this down. From the event tick, we need to reinterpolate the, where are we looking? Reinterp two, reinterpolate the two rotation values. Put our seconds into the delta time and our actor rotation into the current, with the current rotation. And from here, we'll get our find look at, find look at rotation. Turn these two vectors into a rotator and put that into our target. And that's more or less it. We'll uh, grab the, the relative rotation node. We'll have to duplicate that so that it, you know, puts these values somewhere. And that is done. Now, if we hit play. Oh, yep, something's wrong. Oh yeah, I'll start and I'll target uh, backwards. <laughs> so we'll just move the player pawn down to the bottom one. Oh, and also we have to change our interpolate speed. We'll put the speed to two. So we'll see it very quite obviously. There we go. There's some nice natural looking camera swing. And because we're using the same blueprint for, for each of these cameras, it's affecting all of them at once. Brilliant. Lots of fun to play with. And it's easy to adapt with the new direction for each camera now that the control rotation is being set with the, with the transition. And a little bit of lag helps for, helps for readjustment. There's only one thing though. When we hit play, so the camera has to move to the player. It's not just starting, sitting on the player. But we can fix that by coming back to this same code that we had before and just plugging this into a begin play. Because this will only be executed once at the start when the level loads. So when the, when the level loads and the, the actors are, are uh, created, are spawned, it will execute the same script that we had from before, which will just set the rotation of the camera to the location of the player. Hit play and boom, we're already set. Camera is already aligned and it's adjusting itself just perfectly. The only other thing that I did, uh, that I would do here is, is get the camera, the camera from your fixed cam blueprint and lower the field of view down to more like 60. Because the field of view on 90 is more for like your first person shooters and that kind of thing. Or if you're playing up like quite close to things. With 60, see the, it's a little bit bigger on screen. The space is a little bit easier to, to rationalize in my opinion. And the, if, yeah, this, that's it. This is how to make the Resident Evil camera in Unreal Engine. It's actually quite fun to play around with. You can, you can imagine the, the, the different kinds of things that you could do with a, a system like this. And it's easy to switch which it's just this, uh, this custom event that we made, checking these, uh, these conditions, these branches. I suppose you could take this code and just feed in a different variable, turn it into a macro or a function or something. You could use a variable as, uh, as these, these distance values, or you could set a different distance value for each one, depending on the architecture, the, the layout of your scene. And we probably didn't need that. Yeah, we can delete this from the begin play. This is the level blueprint, and this shouldn't change anything. Yeah, because that was just the begin play with the setting of the camera. Now the event tick is setting the camera based on the integer. So I hope this made sense to everybody. It's a yeah, pretty good system, pretty simple and easy to set up. 
And that's it from me. I'll see you guys next time.